And uh, so, uh, <coughs> just got I got one verse over here in, in Luke chapter eleven, <coughs> and that's verse thirteen, and it says, uh, "If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give <coughs> the whole?" Holy Spirit to them that ask. Well, I've read a little bit on the gifts of God today. What what kind of sparked that was what we preached this morning here about Hezekiah, and maybe a little bit of to be continued here tonight. This morning, or yeah, this morning I'd read down through verse eleven in Second Kings chapter twenty. I'm going to pick up in verse twelve now. <coughs> And uh, read some of this and, and maybe just talk just a few minutes and, and give Rob uh, plenty of time. Verse 12 says, At that time, uh, Barodak Baladan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present unto Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. And Hezekiah hearkened unto them and showed them all the house of his precious things, <coughs> the silver and the gold, and the spices, and the precious ointment, and all the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house, nor in all his dominion, that Hezekiah showed them not. Then came Isaiah the prophet unto king Hezekiah, and said unto him, What said these men, and from whence came they unto thee? And Hezekiah said, They are come from a far country, even from Babylon. And he said, What have they seen in thine house? And Hezekiah answered, All the things that are in mine house have they seen. There is nothing (coughs) among my treasures that I have not showed them. And Isaiah said unto Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days come that all that is in thy house and that which thy fathers have laid up in store unto this day shall be carried into Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. (coughs) Excuse me. Then said Hezekiah unto Isaiah, Good is the word of the Lord which thou hast spoken. And he said, It is not good... Is it not good, I'm sorry, if peace and truth uh, be in my days? And the rest of the acts of Hezekiah and all his might, and how he made a pool and a conduit and brought water into the sea, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of Kings of Judah? Well, I got over in there. I'm just trying to get some reading out of the way here real quick, and I'll share this with you. You go into 2 Chronicles 32. You don't have to go over here, but uh, verse 23 says, And many brought gifts unto the Lord to Jerusalem in presence to Hezekiah, king of Judah, so that he was magnified in the sight of all nations from thenceforth. This is right after God had defeated the Assyrians for Hezekiah out here. But in verse 24, and of course, let me say this, we know from this morning that Hezekiah was told, you're going to die. Well, he turned his face to the wall, he prayed, he cried. Uh, Isaiah come back, said, you've got 15 more years. Verse 24 says, in those days, Hezekiah was sick to death and prayed unto the Lord, and He spake unto him, and He gave him a sign. That was the sun going back ten degrees. Now verse 25, But Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore there was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Notwithstanding, Hezekiah humbled himself for the pride of his heart, both he and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the wrath of the Lord came not upon them in the days of Hezekiah. And Hezekiah had exceeding much riches and honor, and he made himself treasures uh, for silver and for gold and for precious stones and for spices and for shields and for all manner of pleasant jewels, storehouses also for the increase of corn and wine and oil and stalls for all manner of beasts and coats for flocks. Moreover, he provided him cities and possessions of flocks and herds in abundance, for God had given him substance very much. This same Hezekiah also stopped the upper water course of Gihon and brought it straight down the west side of the city of David, and Hezekiah prospered in all his works. How be it? In the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon who sent unto him to inquire the wonder that was done in the land, God left him to try him that he might know all that was in his heart. Well, 
We know that God gives great gifts to us, folks. I mean, that's, uh, you know, the gifts of God are, are precious. They should be precious to us, uh, and they should be very great in our sight. And this morning we talked about this. I'm going to try to hurry. But this morning we talked about this, about uh, how that Hezekiah was facing death. And it even says that again over in Second Chronicles. Uh, it says, you know, that he was sick unto death, uh, and he prayed. He faced that wall and he prayed. He cried unto God, uh, and God sent Isaiah back, and he said, I've added 15 years to your life. Well, uh, great gifts. And then uh, Hezekiah is now healed from this sickness that he's had. Uh, and the king of Babylon don't actually know that he's been healed. He thinks he's still sick. Uh, and so he sends a letter down there to him. He says, I'm going to send some ambassadors down uh, to, to check on you there, whatever it may be, bring you some gifts and things. Uh, well, when Hezekiah, when they come down there to see Hezekiah, uh, instead of uh, being a witness to them, instead of being a great light to them, and he could have, because it says that they come to see the great wonder that was done in the land. They come to see what God had done, folks. Uh, but when they come, rather than being shown what God had done for Hezekiah, what they were shown was all the treasure and all the things uh, that everybody had brought to him, all the worldly things, all those things. Uh, God had given him a great gift, folks. He had given him life uh, when he shouldn't have had life anymore. It was his time uh, to face death, and God said, I'm going to give you 15 more years. Uh, a great gift in anybody's sight tonight. Uh, we know that there's nothing in this world that we fight for uh, harder than our life itself. You take somebody uh, that's down, that's starving, that's uh, whatever, facing any kind of persecution, you know, all that kind of stuff, folks, they're going to fight for that life. It is a great gift. It's the greatest gift of all uh, is life. But as Hezekiah, uh, he, he prayed, he said, God, give me life. Uh, God comes along, he says, I'll give you life, uh, and I'm going to give you... Uh, 15 more years, set that house in order. Uh, but it says over in Second Chronicles uh, there... <coughs> That, that Hezekiah rendered not again according to the benefit done unto him, uh, for his heart was lifted up. Uh, therefore there was wrath upon him and upon Judah and Jerusalem. Folks, uh, Hezekiah began to squander this gift uh, that God had given him. That's been my thought this evening. Uh, don't squander the gift that God has given you, folks. I know I talked a little bit about this morning. Like I said, just felt like it just, uh, just went cold halfway through. I don't know what happened. Uh, but listen, God's given us a great gift tonight. Uh, he's given us life. He's given us breath. Uh, he's given us a voice, a means, a way. Uh, he's given us all. He's a vehicle out there for every one of us. Uh, we've all got a way of going. We've all got a uh, neighbor somewhere lost and undone. Uh, somebody dying, folks. Uh, whether they know it or not, we've seen it right here uh, in the last weeks. People desperate, uh, depressed, folks, oppressed. Uh, the devil fighting them on every side, every way. Uh, feeling like nobody cares, folks. Folks, uh, whether you understand it or not, I don't know tonight, uh, but I'm telling you, these people in rock throwing distance uh, of this church house that feels like uh, that they've got nobody in this world, uh, and here we are uh, bundled up in here uh, claiming to have a love of God uh, while people sit around about us thinking they've got nobody, folks. Uh, listen, we, we've got a responsibility tonight, uh, and it's time that we stop squandering the gift uh, that God has given us. They may have been a time. Uh, uh, we probably all talked about it, testified of it uh, here in the church house uh, sometime or another. I should have met death, you know, uh, several times out running the roads, folks. Uh, should have been run over, killed. I don't know uh, all the times that God has shielded me, uh, but I know tonight that He's given me a gift. And it's just a few more days. Uh, folks, it ain't been too long ago. Uh, I should have been killed several times, folks. Uh, but He chose to give me just a few more days. He said, uh, and maybe I I never even knew it, but he spared me uh, for some reason, folks. Uh, it might be the lost man down the road. I don't know. Uh, it might be the ones that are hungry without food, uh, the ones that don't have clothes on their back, freezing tonight. Uh, I don't know what the need is, but I know that God has given me a great gift tonight. Uh, and when somebody comes into my presence, folks, uh, it's not my responsibility to bring them in uh, and show them all that I've got. Oh, look at this. Uh, I bought this a year ago. Oh, look how shiny this is. Uh, no, folks, that's not my responsibility. Uh, what God has given me is a gift of life. Uh, Doc David spoke of a life and life more abundantly. If I'm going to share anything, uh, that's what it needs to be tonight. That's what it needs to be. Life. Life. 
we're so blessed in this country, you know. Seems like that's kind of going downhill. Things are getting harder for everybody, but <coughs> we really don't know yet what hardship is. Uh, truth be told, now, you know, well, uh, they cut my electric off, you know. That's bad. I know, I know electric makes it a lot easier, but like David talks about sometimes, ain't been too many years ago, nobody had it, you know? That's not a necessity of life. We really just don't know what hardship is in this country. Uh, but, uh, you know, it seems like all we want to share is our wealth. You know, we want to show that off and brag about it and look at it. And uh, you look around, even the church nowadays, you know, just like the church, which one was it? Laodicea there, I believe it was. Uh, he said, because they are rich and increased with goods uh, and have need of nothing, folks. Uh, but really, the, the case was that they was blind and naked, folks. Uh, in the eyes of God, they had nothing. Folks, you look around. Uh, I told somebody a while back, they come in here and uh, I tell you, I'm not... I hope I never am, and I hope nobody sees me as being exalted or anything like that. But somebody come into the church, and they said, "Oh, you got a very nice church here." You know, I said, "Listen," and I understand, folks. It hits a weight on me sometimes because I understand. And I told them this. I said, "Listen, if we don't do what God wants us to do, it's going to be our own fault because He's blessed us with everything that we need, folks. They Sunday school rooms, fellowship hall. We all know." Uh, listen, there's everything we need. We're warm tonight, uh, cool in the sun, all that, folks. Everything been made easy. Uh, oh, we're so lazy anymore, though. I talked about it a while back. Uh, most people can't get to church, uh, but by the time that their grandparents was uh, cooking dinner somewhere or something like that, they rode a uh, some kind of old horse or mule. I don't know how many miles. Uh, it didn't matter, folks. Rain, snow. Uh, they went. They went to get what God had for them. But because it was the greatest thing that they'd ever had uh, in their life. Nobody could offer them more uh, than God could, folks. Uh, there's a little old cemetery up there in Chestnut Flat. I'd love to take in some time, love for you to see it. Uh, just little hand-carved tombstones out there. Uh, folks, uh, people couldn't even write. Uh, they had letters backwards on the tombstones of their children. Uh, they said things like, uh, not dead, only sleeping, waiting for Jesus to come. Uh, folks, they had nothing except what God uh, could offer them. We are squandering our gift. Mm. Just squandering what God's given us, folks. The devil's fighting our homes. How many homes... Broken up by divorce, things like that nowadays. How many little children, folks? Showing Roseanne there today, a guy I know. I was looking on my phone there, and him and his wife going through a divorce, and he got a little boy there, I think three years old, and he he's all time posted pictures of that little boy, folks. He, his wife's had a restraining order against him. He's not been able to see him uh, 28, 30 days. I forget what it was, but now uh, he's got to see him a little bit. And he's posting pictures of uh, everything that little boy does. And folks, it, I don't know if anybody else cares tonight, but it breaks my heart to see that. Uh, it, it just kills me to see the homes tore apart, uh, ripped apart, Satan raging, folks, uh, destroying little children and everything else uh, while we sit back and do nothing for the most part. Now, I know, you know, folks, I know, I, I brag on our church and I tell everybody what good services we have and how God moves and and all that. But folks, it just I'm going to tell you, uh, just just me, it's come crashing down on me that that there is people right around us that don't have anybody. You know, we, we welcome everybody in, but who do we bring? You know, who do we go out and get? 
The Bible gives that story about a great supper that was prepared and uh, many people were invited there. Oh, he invited all the important people uh, all around. And I think a lot of times we're kind of guilty of that. You know, we invite the ones we like and uh, the ones we think would fit good in our church and all that kind of stuff. And uh, and then none of them ever come, don't seem like. You know, we, we just, uh, what we do is we frustrate ourselves and we, uh, we end up feeling about like a failure most of the time because uh, we're out begging to people that we love and feel like would come in uh, and they won't come. And then uh, that father, he, he said, uh, uh, he said, well, since that didn't work, since they won't come, uh, he said, I want you to go out in the highways and the hedges uh, and compel them to come in that my house might be filled. Uh, folks, we talked to a man the other day. Uh, he, he said, nobody comes, nobody calls unless they want something. Uh, and, and we told him over there that day, uh, I said, look, we don't want nothing from you. We ain't out to get you money. Uh, nothing like that. All we want to do is, is you just come and be with us, folks. Uh, it is God's will that, that His house uh, be filled, folks. I don't know what's wrong with the country anymore. Uh, we say we're a Christian nation. We say we love God. Uh, every church up and down the road uh, looks like this one tonight. More empty seats than, than full, folks. They've turned their minds, their hearts, their attention uh, to everything else, folks. Anything can draw us away. Uh, it seems like... I mean, just anything, any kind of little event. Oh, won't you come to church? Oh, no. <coughs> I can't come tonight, you know. Uh, my my third cousin, twice removed, had two kids uh, 28 years ago, and one of them had a baby. And tomorrow they're having a little birthday party for it. I've never seen it before. I, I thought I might go, and and they don't go, folks. Uh, but their mind and their heart is turned uh, to anything except an Almighty God, folks. Uh, do we not know tonight uh, that they just like us will stand tonight uh, before an Almighty God, folks? Uh, but I'm telling you, it may just be just as scary tonight uh, when we stand there because of the blood that's on our own hands, folks. Uh, what are you going to tell God when He uh, looks you in the eye and says, what about the man down the road? Uh, what about the one who couldn't buy food, folks? Uh, what about the one that just didn't know about me? Hey, and folks, we say everybody in this country knows about God. Now, I beg to differ with you tonight. Uh, they've heard about a God and they've seen a people tonight. Uh, uh, that strut around and say, I know God, uh, but they they just like the world the rest of the week. Uh, they've been shown a false God all their lives. Uh, I'm telling you, when it, when we get down to business uh, and we begin to present God like He is uh, to a lost and dying world, when we begin to walk, uh, like we said this morning, uh, perfect and upright before a uh, lost country, folks, uh, and they begin to examine and see our deeds, uh, they're going to know that God is real. Yes, sir. Yes, man. Come on. We we preach a God anymore that loves everybody and don't deliver anybody. God is real, brother. God, is real. God loves you like you are. We say that because we don't believe God can deliver them from what they are. Listen, folks. We, we just we've squandered an inheritance and a gift. I found out that not everybody is easy to talk to. You know, I mean that's just the fact. Some people don't want to hear it. <coughs> And I'll just be honest with you, I ain't very good at talking to them that don't want to hear it, you know. I never was very good at forcing myself or my opinion uh, on somebody. But I, I'll tell you what else I found. There's a lot of people that do want to hear it. And I, I found out that when they, when they get in that shape where they're ready to hear what God has to offer, and I meet up with that person and the Spirit of God begins to work and uh, my mouth just flaps away. You know, I can talk to them. You know, I can tell them what God has done because they're ready, folks, to receive. But a lot of them ain't hearing. A lot of them don't know. And I've been saying for a while that we've got to start some outreach stuff. We've got to start going out, folks. 
And, and we're going to soon. We just we have to listen to this. I'm going to hush and get Rob up here. Verse at verse 31 over in Second Chronicles. He said, How be it in the business of the ambassadors of the princes of Babylon who sent unto him sent unto him to inquire of the wonder that was done in the land? God left him <clears throat> to try him. He put him on trial, in other words, he tested him. <clears throat> that he might know all that was in his heart. Well, I've been around church all my life, you know. And I've seen every kind of thing, probably. You know, and some of you all have seen every kind of thing, too. But I know tonight, you know, nights like tonight when you've got a, a anointed bunch of singers up here and the, 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 the Spirit just moving, you know, God moving and working and uh, God's planted a little bit of thought in your mind and... You know, you got a little bit of scripture to go with it and a little bit of anointing, a little flow from God. Thank God for that uh, tonight, but you, you've got all that, and uh, it's a very easy thing, folks. I, I mean, it just flows and it works and it, it moves, you know, but uh, here, uh, here, just like when, when Hezekiah, the ambassadors of Babylon, come, and uh, it says that uh, in this business of the ambassadors here that God left him to try and to see all that was in his heart. You know, uh, David talks about it a lot of times, praying when you don't feel like praying and yet you just really feel no response for God from God. And I heard him say down here one day and uh, it's stuck in my mind and uh, been a, a great light and witness and teacher for me. I appreciate David, but uh, he said down here one day that when uh, you you pray, when God sees you praying, when, when he, you don't feel anything, thing uh, that God says right there is a man after my heart. You see, what about when God departs from us? What about when He leaves us uh, to do the work of God without maybe so much the unction of God? Uh, folks, I'm telling you, there's been a lot of times <coughs> for all of us, uh, all of us who preach, all of us who sing, all of us uh, who work in front of a congregation, uh, there's been a lot of times when we've come into the pulpit or, or behind a microphone or whatever it may be, uh, when there was really no unction from God. But God gave us a little bit uh, of knowledge tonight. We've looked out you know, over a crowd of people and we've said, Lord, I, I don't know all the needs, but I know that You've got us here uh, for some reason. Like David says, we've got a right uh, to worship Him tonight. He's given us that. Uh, whether you feel so much of an unction to do that or not, uh, He's just as worthy to be praised uh, when you can feel the goosebumps running up and down your back uh, as He is when you sit there and you you feel like you know, that God's got just forgot completely who you are. Yes, sir. Oh, folks, He's still God. <clears throat> what about when God has left us to do the work on our own? And I'm glad that don't happen too often. I'll make a bad enough mess when He helps me, you know. <laughs> but what about then? What do we, you know, when God tries us? To see all that's in our heart, what does he find in there? You know, what's he really find in there? David, I think David says this. He says you can look at a man's checkbook and tell a whole lot about what he loves. You know, and I was, I was thinking today there, <coughs> we went to eat with uh, Roseanne's parents and. Her dad had my phone over there going through my pictures on there. You know, just looking and just about all the pictures on there is of the boys or, you know, something like that. I was thinking, I thought that come back to my mind. I thought, boy, you can look at a man's pictures and tell a whole lot about what he cares about too, you know. But there was the boys, but probably no less than a hundred pictures of things going on in the church too and stuff like that. Folks, what's God going to find in her heart, really? I mean, I, you can fool me. It's easy done. Been done plenty of times. You can, you can fool me just in a heartbeat. <clears throat> and you probably trick every one of us here. I don't know. Unless, unless God reveals something to somebody uh, different. As far as just the old flesh, though, I'm easy fooled. It don't take much. But God can see a place that I can't see. 
You know, God knows the heart, the, the very intentions of the heart. He knows what's in there, folks. And the best way for Him to find out what's in there is for Him to just leave you alone for a few minutes and see what you do. That's what He'll do. And folks, he's, there's been times when He's left us to try us. To, he says, I've given them this gift. You know, the Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels. He'll leave us just a little while. He'll say, I'm just going to see what they do. And he's probably not too proud a lot of times of what he finds that we do when he leaves us. He says, oh, I'll give them this gift, and they're squandering it. They ain't doing nothing with it. Look at that guy just watching TV, you know. Look at that guy. I don't know. You know, he's he's going through a battle. Do I go down the road and talk to that man, or, or I, I feel awful bad. I might just take me a nap, you know. I mean, folks, out. That's real, you know. Come on, Robbie. Come on home, brother. Folks, please tonight, consider what God's done for you, what He's given you. Consider the need of the people outside this building tonight. And let's not squander what God's given us. Let's, let's be mindful of our gifts tonight. Come on, Robbie. <clears throat>